God does his best work like in the background and I wish I could properly communicate to you all how honestly depressing the debt was for me and not just the number and the money and like feeling delayed in certain life um, milestones and things like that um, but just really feeling like I mentioned earlier like the abandonment of like I didn't even put myself in this position. What's up, fam? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline. And yes, we are back, the W Podcast. We are excited. Yeah. It's good to be back in the seat. We've missed you guys, all of you. It's been a lot going on lately. Yeah. Yeah. And some of you may be wondering, Yo, where the heck y'all been? Like, since we started this podcast, we have never, ever, Taking ever, ever long, taken yeah. that long of a break. Break. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't intentional either. Yeah, just not when it started. Happened. <laughs> yeah. Then, so essentially, what happened is life. Pauline gave birth to our second son in November, and that took us out way more than we ever would have thought. Yeah. Having two kids. Yeah, and we were sustained a little bit with a lot of help. Um, during the holiday season, but after that was over, we weren't getting any sleep. <laughs> yeah, so obviously we had la launched a couple of podcast episodes after he was born because our last one was in February. Yeah. But to be honest, we were tired. Yeah. And sometimes when you're tired, sometimes you need to rest. But then other times it shows where your true motivations are. And I'll speak for me. I think it was harder to continue to do this because I kind of lost sight of why we even started this podcast in the first place. Oh, we're getting deep. Yeah, yeah. Already. We back. In the beginning. So for us, the reason we do this podcast is to help people grow closer to God, grow closer to each other if they're dating currently, and then grow closer in community. And I kind of lost sight of that. For you know, it's easy with social media. You get caught up in what other podcasts are doing or what other pages on social media are doing, and you can lose sight of all that God has already been doing through you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that definitely impacted why I stopped initially, along with being tired. That was the main reason. But that tiredness revealed. Yeah, and you were pretty much. Carrying the podcast on your own for a while. Cause you know, I was trying. Yeah, the end of Woo. pregnancy and very, very early postpartum. You know, you were posting episodes by yourself and having guest speakers and editing all that stuff. And most of you guys know, since our podcast is like a tight knit community, that, you know, this is just us. Like, we're a two person show, <laughs> um, like on camera and behind the scenes. Um, and for those of you guys who are parents, we know that you understand. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can just imagine what it's like, not just giving birth and recovering from that, but having a toddler. Um, we also, you know, share a lot of things that had happened at the end of the, of the year last year where we were still processing and kind of going through grief and adjusting to moving and all that stuff. So we just thank you all for your grace. Um, <laughs> for those of you guys who are still tuning in if you so, listen to this the week it comes out you a real one you, yeah. you really like our content we love you for that but yeah if that's you let us know where you what's been going on in your life since 2024 2024 started um whether it's on the podcasting platforms or on youtube we're just really happy to be back um and we don't you know having two kids we've never done it before it's it's a lot to <laughs> learn and navigate so we're not trying to pretend like we have it all together because we don't, but we're going to give you guys our best in every season and every stage, whatever that looks like. And sometimes that looks like us kind of taking a step back and taking care of ourselves. Yeah. So somebody may be wondering, why are y'all back now? Like, that sounds all good. You know, you was tired, all that. But why now? And to be honest, it's been a journey and a process. We knew eventually we were going to come back because we love doing this. But really kickstarted it as far as us posting this week is the other week somebody uh, we ran into somebody at our church mm -hmm. and they were like just randomly were like we miss you 
or I miss you is what they said. Mm -hmm. And this isn't somebody that we necessarily know. Like they, they've come to one of our mixers before in the past. And, uh, but outside of that, we never had any real conversations outside of that event. So we were sitting there like, thank you. That's nice. But like, why she, why would she say that? And it just came to us as we were sitting in church and listening to the sermon. And of course y'all know how God works. The sermon is speaking right to us where we need it. And we were like, yo, it's time to come back with the podcast. Because we took that as we missed. Because that's the only way she knows us is through our podcast and our page. And we took that as, yo, we need to get back in our seat mm. of doing our podcast. Because this is how we show up for the kingdom. So after all that, let's get into the real podcast. But I do have one more quick thing. Pauline's like, yo, get going. But hey, it's my first week back, all right? We a little, a little rusty. This is a whole separate topic. <laughs> we launched a new page. I just got to shout this out really quick. We are just believers. If you love Christ-centered content that's not just about dating, but about everything that right. encompasses Christ, please do us a favor and follow our new Instagram page. Uh, we're trying to build that community up. So if that interests you, definitely check it out. But this week, we are talking all about what God did, because we, well, let me even back it up. And Pauline, you're probably mad at me, but guess what? It's the first week back. I'm it's just along for the ride. <laughs> and I will say, last announcement, really uh, quick. Uh, <laughs> it's like, like on TNT, like, Ernie, can I give a shout out? They just be rapping. Anyway, I'm all off target. Man, I, I know you appreciate that. <laughs> so, last announcement. Next week, we are going to be getting back into our question of the day series. That's how mm. we started this podcast. So if you have a question on love, faith, sex, marriage, dating, whatever it may be, you can send it to us in the anonymous form in our about page on YouTube, on our link tree, in our social media bio. And we would love to answer your questions. If you know anything about our podcast, most of the episodes have been question of the day, right. uh, where we try our best to answer your questions. And if you have a question, definitely send that in. But today, getting back to what we're talking about on this first podcast back, if you remember, one of the last episodes we dropped was talking about how God blessed us with a new home. Yeah. And one of the things we mentioned in that video was that when we bought this house, we were still in massive student loan debt. Like, not just a little bit, you know, we got 5K, we got clean. It was like massive. A lot. Hundreds. Or hundred, whatever you want to say. Hundreds of thousands, <laughs> not just hundreds of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were still heavy in debt. But a few months into us living here, I don't even think it was two months. It was December. We became completely debt free. And we started out our marriage. Outside with, of the house, yeah. Outside of the house. <laughs> we started off our marriage with 180K in debt. And when we moved into this house, we were still over 100. We didn't really do much. It was much. 180, but yeah. It was. It was we'll 170? Guys, we'll tell you guys the numbers in a okay. little bit. Um, so this episode really is just giving God all the glory for yes, that. Thank you, Jesus. And trying to encourage you in an area where you may be believing God for something. because, And we might as well just start here because it's, it's flowing here naturally. When we first got married, there was a lot of shame mm -hmm. that was attached to the debt that we had. Because, and I, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I, I'm gonna I just, mean, just go, go right it. there. Yeah. When we got married, I had student loan debt, let's be clear. But Pauline had a lot more student the loan debt. The majority of it. For me, I did not care. Maybe just because I was a husband or just my personality, but it's not that I didn't care. Let me, <laughs> but I was it wasn't not a deciding factor. Yeah, I wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to marry this girl because she has all this debt. I know there are some people like that, and right. that is what it is. But that wasn't my story, and. <laughs> For Pauline, she had a lot of, would you say guilt is the right word? Yeah, for sure. So can you share more about that? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are in that situation. <sighs> yeah, well, and just to kind of like give more context, I'm the type of person, I'm really, really hard on myself like about everything. And um, I think that, you know, even before Tim and I got together and when I was in college and I had realized like what I had done, <laughs> like how much money I was going to owe and how long it was going to take me to pay back and how much people really make like, oh, this is this is not something that's just going to get knocked out in a, a year or two or even five years. Dave Ramsey was the best, worst thing that ever happened to you. It is true <laughs> to this day. I appreciate Dave 
so much and what he does and his businesses, but I cannot watch him and I've stopped <laughs> watching him um, probably close to what, like five or six years now because of the shame that I have felt. And that's not his fault. And I know that, that he wouldn't, it, it, it's had nothing to do with him actually, but it's just me. Um, so yeah, yeah. I had a lot of shame about, uh, about, you know, money and stuff. And like, it's so crazy because I know other people when they are approaching marriage, they kind of have their own things in their past, like, you know, a sexual past or whatever it is. Where they're like, oh, is this person gonna like want me or am I, gonna, am I good enough for this person because of what I did in the past or what had happened to me in the past? Even people like, especially who went through abuse, um, excuse me, like kind of wrestle with that from what I understand. But that was me with debt. That was me like, I mean, I was never, li I never lied to you about it. I was very upfront from the beginning because I was like, yo, I don't want him to, I want him to know exactly what he's getting into. I'm like, he can decide, of course, like, if it was something that was, you know, important to him or whatever. So are you saying that even before we really started talking, no. not, not just me, but like any guy, were you worried about that? Like um, I think I would, if I would... To have married, like, a really rich guy, I wouldn't have worried about it as much. Oh, I ain't saying she had gold. Either. Yeah. I mean, let's... I mean, context matters. Because somebody... You know, what I had... Well, like, $120,000, $130,000 worth of student loan debt. That amount of money to somebody who's making $300,000 a year and is going to... hear. Yeah, of course. But it's going to sound... Know. It's going to sound different to somebody who's making... Thirty thousand dollars a year, so it all depends. But no, I wasn't. I was. I mean, I honestly, guys, wanted to marry rich <laughs> for a lot of reasons, and I did marry rich. Um, <laughs> now you are throwing it. In. Yeah. No, but that no, wasn't the case. From the let's talk about it because are you? Do you have more to say? Go ahead. When we first got married, or even when we got engaged, I was only making thirty-two k a year, and I've right. shared that before in this podcast, right. which obviously. For most people, it's not a lot of money to be able to live on and start a family. But that was the context that you were probably also trying to process. Like, this guy, like, he nice, but the money ain't there yet. Yeah. Amen. You, you see, I, see what I did there? Amen. So, you had to work through that, not just before we got married, but honestly, even up to the day we could debt free and may pay the well, I, well yeah I think it was more of for me like I still felt a, felt a very large sense of responsibility I wasn't like oh I'm gonna get a sugar daddy's gonna pay this off for me I still was paying my own loans my own you know payments every month and I just felt bad putting that burden on you like okay you only have thirty thousand dollars well let me just add you know 120 onto that like that's why I I understand I wouldn't do it I don't think it's necessarily like right but I understand people who are like I work so hard to get out of debt especially when you get married older a little bit older um I work so hard to get out of debt like I will not take on your debt and if you are older you know the uh, late 30s early 40s and you are you know possibly dating somebody who has a ton of debt and they're the same age as you i understand you being pissed about that because it's like what have you been doing the past 20 years since you I got just out of school last year you can't blame no, me no 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 but you anyway i understand it in that context but if you're you know some people are blessed to not have any student loans at all and you're 23 getting out of college and you're talking about oh i'm not you know it's kind of like you're gonna the money it will get paid off eventually uh i don't know just getting married who you choose to marry is a much bigger decision than money yeah and this is kind of a marriage tip and honestly it could be any relationship but as a spouse of somebody who's going through and it could be anything it could be guilt of work it could be guilt of a parent relationship that they have or whatever it may be as the spouse of somebody who is dealing with that, I cannot change how you feel. Right. Like, I tried my best to communicate the point, it don't matter to me, we're going to work this out together, we good, but it still was affecting her. And so you got to be mindful of the spouse who is on the other side of that, not to let it start to affect you and bother you. Like, why is she listening to me? Like, why isn't he listening to me? Getting why? frustrated. Yeah, getting yeah. frustrated with them because it really has nothing to do with you and you have to allow them 
to have time with God to yeah. work that out. And you should be praying for them, honestly, because that's the worst thing you can do is to allow a situation that really has nothing to do with you become something that has to do with you. And then it makes your marriage worse, honestly. Because yeah. I could have made the whole thing worse if I was really getting frustrated. Like, why are you still dealing with this? Like, we in year three and you still talking about this? I told I mean, you. And I had some friends when I was like, in the, that I was very vulnerable with them about like how I felt about money and my and the debt that I had. It was kind of like, it's not that big of a deal. You'll kind of, you know, it'll get paid off and it's supposed to get paid off, which is true. And they're, you know, they're trying to be encouraging the best way that they know how. But a lot of it, if we're being honest with me, was like really just dealing with disappointment as to why I had the debt in the first place. Because um, a lot of people go into school, of course, like I think the majority of people have student loans because school is so expensive. But for me, um, or sorry, yeah, those, a lot of people have have loans today um, in this current day and age, and a lot of people go into it knowing they're going to have loans, knowing that, like, hey, they took it on for themselves. Obviously, how much do you know when you're 17, 18 years old, how much $30,000, or in my case, $120,000 is, but, you know, that was kind of the thing, but the thing is, for me, I went into school having loans that my parents co-signed thinking and believing that my parents were going to pay them off for me. And when I realized that that wasn't going to happen through a series of conversations, I felt lied to. I felt like abandoned. And I think I shared this, you know, a few years ago during when I shared like just my overall testimony of coming to Christ, of just feeling abandoned. And this area was probably one of the biggest areas of hurt that I had in my in regards to my relationship with my dad and um, because he was the one when I was growing up telling me you know you're gonna go to college and your brother going to college like that was pretty much his like biggest goal for us which is a great goal to have for your children and it was completely out of love. My parents are huge believers in education. And um, I was fine with that, you know. And they, they, every decision that they made for us as children growing up, you know, set us up to go to college. And he pretty much told me and my brother, but, like, you can go to whatever college you want to. I'll pay for it. Just get in. It's your job to get the grades and do everything you need to do to get in um so i took that very seriously and essentially like took it to the bank in a way and you know through a series of conversations in college and after college i realized like i'm kind of on my own with this and it wasn't completely in that way um but I share all that to say that's why I felt a lot of maybe more guilt and shame because some people are probably sitting on here. My best friend to tell me all the time, like, Lenny, there's a lot of people who have a lot more debt than you do, <laughs> and like they're fine, like doctors and lawyers and people who have you know PhDs and stuff like that, and those programs are extremely expensive. Um, and people just who have gone to more expensive because I went to an out of state state school, you know, I didn't go to a, a private school i mean it was private school prices but there are more expensive schools that i could have went to um and she's right there are people who have way more debt than that and if you're sitting here listen like listening or watching and you're thinking like girl you think 120 or something i got 250 or i have 300 there are people with like upwards to almost half a million dollars in student loan debt depending on you know, what schooling pathways they, they've taken. Um, so I'm not trying to say, like, oh, mine's the worst. But for, for you. me, yeah, for me, I had a lot of guilt and shame about that because I felt like I got played, <laughs> if we're just being honest. I felt like I wasn't supposed to have this debt and I have it versus me knowing from the beginning, oh, I'm going to have this and I'm going to have to pay it off. So we get married and we have how much debt? Uh, you had it up. You wanted to read the official. So number. the last noted amounts that we had or I have from us is from 2020. This is November 2020. But I'm saying when we started, when we first got married. Yeah. I mean, that's the oldest date that I have. So it was over. What is this? <laughs> there's an there's a older oh, date. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Reading is fundamental. Um, okay, so, whew, this is really bad. <laughs> yeah, girl, what are you looking at? <laughs> ah, this is a lot of money. Okay, so it says, okay, so this is uh, six months, seven months after we got married. This is January 19th, 19th, oh my gosh. <laughs> First Sorry, I'm all tired. January 19th, 2019, we had 
thousand one hundred thirty nine dollars and ninety seven cents of debt student loan debt we yeah. all should just say we've both never had um credit cards. credit cards tim did have a car loan that he paid off before we got married but we've never had car loans this, this, so or credit cards I student found loans have been our only this is random. loans i found a note today i made the text to you but i never did from 2017 in my phone it was like a list of my goals back then, paying off my car loans. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, go with Before we got married. Yeah, you did it. So, we started off with somewhere around 170 maybe a little more. 171000 And our focus was to get out of debt, obviously. But I don't think it was until 2020 where we really started, outside of our jobs, intentionally trying to get out of debt. Would you say that? Because that's when we started doing Instacart. Okay. So, 2020, maybe a little bit before that, we started doing Instacart. And honestly, it was the perfect time because yeah. everybody was pandemic, ordering yeah. groceries in. So, your boy was, was making money for Instacart. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's chill out. It wasn't anything like... <laughs> for Instacart. You're holding up to $171,000 right. of debt. It wasn't really holding a candle, but... See how, you, when you look back on stuff, you could... Uh, and what, what do you think it what do you think you made that year? <laughs> Wasn't it like five K? Yeah, I think together Which, we, honestly, made, we made like bad. ten. I mean, so yeah, for like a weekend, weekend job, that's great. For like an hour after my real job. And la- that's before taxes, so Yeah. Um, but it's just crazy how you can that's like what they say about when you have kids and it's like you forget what a baby what a baby is like. You got you got a two year old, you forget what it was like to have a baby. Oh, I was going to say when you thought you were tired in college and then you oh, have a well, kid. Too. <laughs> or like the Israelites, they wanted to go back to slavery. They Make forgot it what it was really like. Yeah. yeah. The Bible in there. yeah. All right. So Perspective. we started doing Instacart, only made about 5K less with taxes. And did we stop? Why did we stop? Oh, so I did end up, I was still in that 32K job. It ended up going up to 36K. I think by the time I left, which I worked there from 2018 when we got married to until 2020. 2020. 2021. 2020. Okay. Until 2020. Yeah. So it went up to 40, 42 max was like what I was making there. So we were trying to do Instacart because also at this same time, I'm applying to every job I can find. Turn down, turn down, turn down. Interview went well, turn down. And it was honestly getting frustrated to the point where I was looking at myself like, yo, am I a bad interviewer? Like, am I going to be stuck in this job forever? Yeah. I know some of you may be in a situation, it may not be a job or financial, but you're in a situation where you feel like, am I going to be stuck here forever? Am I going to be single for the rest of my life? Honest. And sometimes it can feel like that when we're in a season where it feels like God is not moving things. Mm-hmm. But you have to remember that God is always working even when it looks like he's not working. Mm-hmm. Because I was in that job and every every single door was getting closed. Because, But that's because God wanted every single door to get closed. Mm-hmm. I think I probably shared this before, but at that job I was able to help other people know Christ in a more meaningful way. And I was able to work on different skills that helped set me up for where I am now that I wouldn't have had if I would have left earlier like everybody else that had that job. Right. And we move on 2020, get a, a new job, making almost double what I, at least I started with at 32K uh, at the next place. Was there for a little bit, like a year and a half-ish, um, right when we had our first son, which was clutch. Like, Pauline was on the phone crying when I first got that job because she was like, oh, Lord, we're not going to be old fools there. Like, she was, she didn't say that, but that's how she felt. And <laughs> it was just cool to see, all right, guys, like, you're progressing this a little bit. And then 2022, 2020, the December 2021 was when I got my first, like, all right, we starting to do something real here, financial. Like a big pay jump. Yeah, yeah, big, big jump, big boy jump. We making some money out here type job. And Pauline also at the same time was working, and she got a new job. So January 2022, we both were making the most we ever had corporately in our jobs. By July 2022, we both were unemployed. So think about that. We are on this, like, ascension, slow, albeit, but we're on this ascension of, all right, we're getting out of debt, we're making more money, we're trying to pay off debt, and all of a sudden it comes to a complete halt. Yeah. Mind you, we have a a child at this time in July 2022. 
mind you, January 2022, we were like, this the year. We about to get a house. We about to pay off debt. Like, we thought we were really going to do something, and, and that wasn't the case at all. The case. But through it all, God showed himself faithful. Because even I was unemployed for six weeks. So those six weeks, we had more money come into our account during those six weeks than we would have if I would have never gotten... I think I got I got laid off. So we would have made less money if I was working and we ended up somehow making through people being generous to us through, uh, what's it called, severance. So it's just cool to see how God works it out. End up getting another job that is even more money than a job that I was making before. And God was there every step of the way. Was there something you wanted to say? No. Uh, I don't know what you was typing or something. So... We get to 2023. We just gotta. I think we gotta just keep it focused on the debt because now this is I'm not talking the, about the debt. You're not. You're talking about your job history. And they are home like. No, 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 no. They are home like. Thank you for for that background. Anyway, <laughs> 2023. We get. How do you want to set the scene then? Because you. How how should we set the scene? For this? Okay, so it's our first week back, y'all. Yeah, I think the main <laughs> message to take from that little anecdote that <laughs> Tim shared. She said I was rapping. You are. Said, they know it. They know it's all said, Please, it's okay. Stop. You missed that. I understand. You know, it's been four months. I think it's more what you all can take from that anecdote is that a lot of change had happened. And we really were not moving the needle on our debt at all. There you go. Wait a second. And we we were we had monthly payments, obviously, until we didn't in 2020, just like you. But what you guys don't know or we didn't share, haven't shared yet. So between the, the two of us, there were three separate loans. It used to be four. Tim, there was like a very small one, maybe like two thousand dollars, that oh we gosh. had p- paid off like very early on in our marriage. So now we have three loans between the two of us. Tim has one, um, like a state, some type of state public loan. That's the, the, all of his debts, like thirty-two thousand dollars or something like that. That pretty much paid for all of his all four five of his years. And who's rapping now? The other two <laughs> are mine. The other two have my name on it. One of them is a public loan similar to his or maybe something that you're familiar with. Um, Nelnet, that whole thing, which for me was like $12,000. The other loan that I have is, had is a private loan that was $95,000, $98,000. That was the big kahuna. That was the majority of my debt. And you guys, that one, there is no pausing on that. There is no... What is a debt relief yeah, student? Yeah. There's nothing. Don't save her. I even you think don't wanna- the I, that's the one that my parents, specifically my mom, had co-signed on. If I were to have died, if she were to have died, that there is no getting out of that loan. Wait, who it paid for been if, if past- y'all would have been gone? The next person you have who to co-sign. It ain't with me. What are you talking? You said about? if I would have died. I said if I died, if she died, it would have went to whichever one of us okay, was still I alive. You were that both of y'all died. Well, oh, I, I mean, they would have been sending you mail. Yeah, anyway, been, anyway. <laughs> so God has been so gracious to this entire process because my mom, um, because she knows and is a woman of honor, she knows that my parents, you know, her, and my dad promised to pay for our school so she took on the majority probably like 90 percent of those hefty 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 monthly payments and we're talking like two thousand dollars a month you guys that was more than our rent and she knew we you know that we couldn't really do it so when she was like you know we promised this but this is you know my parents were dual income they both had great jobs um not that that means anything my mom was very good with money all that so through all of this up to 2020, 2020, we stopped making loan payments, and then we also each month pay my mom like a small portion of um, that monthly payment from that huge private loan. So that is going on while all these job changes are happening. We're trying to advance and grow our income, and this was like literally my prayer. <laughs> 
on the daily, on the weekly, on the monthly, all the things was, Lord, help us to increase our income so that we can get out of debt. You know, like your word says to avoid debt, to escape from debt, to run from it like a gazelle. Like we're trying to do that, but we just don't have the means. Like we have a super low um, apartment rent. Like we try to, you know, obviously avoid debt so we don't incur more. Like we're really, really trying to do this. And I felt like honestly that the lord had given me and given us an impossible task i was like god how am i supposed to pay this off how am i supposed to be able to you know and i would do calculations all the time of like how much money do we need to make like we need to make like 200 220 thousand dollars a year in order to live the way that we want to live and i'm not even talking about like vacations or like new cars or like whatever but i'm talking about like how much money can we make to get out of debt as fast as we possibly can and I'm not just talking about making minimum payments because as you guys know, compound interest, like we're trying to get out of debt. We're not trying to just be able to make the payments every month. Y'all ever do those like income debt calculators? Yeah. And it's like you're putting in your current salary and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to pay off debt till Jesus come back. Well, and we literally had that app that it would tell you, like, you know, kind of the predictor of, like, when you got out of debt. It would 2095. Say, yeah, it would say, like, 25 <laughs> years, and we're like, well, you know? And, you know, trying to keep the faith alive. Like, I would literally cry tears over this, like, how are we ever going to be able to buy a house? How are we ever going to have children? And, like, honestly, you know, having Joshua, our oldest son, that was... A step of faith for me not in a, like a health perspective and in a health way but because of finances like I really a part of me really 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 wanted to wait to have kids until we got out of debt but then I thought to myself I can't have kids when I'm 56 most likely so like we can't go that route and I know that's you know back to the Dave Ramsey thing that's a lot of now he doesn't tell you when to have kids at all or I've never heard him say that but he's a big on you know planning and kind of you know waiting to make certain decisions in your life until they make sense for your budget or for you know your lifestyle and I just felt like that's not just one of the Dave Ramsey was so discouraging for me because I felt like we're never gonna get a house like we're gonna be 60 <laughs> you know buying a house our very first house and like the way that these interest rates are and the way that the market just keeps going up up and up like how are we going to how are we going to manage like this like this is just not going to the math is not mathing. Yeah. So that's what you guys can all can take from that. The anecdote about the jobs and the kind of the process that we were in up until last year, like just changing jobs and, and income and going up and down and all that stuff was like, you know, we were doing everything that we could to try to make more money. But at some point, side jobs, you know, certain things. And we talked about that. They're like, okay, if you have $20,000 of debt, like, yeah, maybe working a side job for a year or two, depending on what the side job is, like, is a good idea for you. Yeah. But for us, it wasn't going to work. <laughs> so, if you watched our last episode, the last episode we did before this one dropped, then you know that Pauline's dad passed late last year. And through that happening, I'm just getting right to the point because we have been running long. Through that happening, we were blessed to be able to pay off all our debt through the life insurance. Is there any more context you think we should give to that? Because obviously that was very anticlimactic, but I know there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot in there, and I don't want to rap, so... Yeah, I think the most important thing that I want to share with this whole experience is that God does his best work, like, in the background. And I wish I could properly communicate to you all how, honestly, depressing the debt was for me. And not just the number and the money and, like, feeling delayed in certain life um, milestones and things like that. Um, but just really feeling, like I mentioned earlier, like the abandonment of like, I didn't even put myself in this position. And I told my mom so many times over the years, like, if I thought you guys were not going to pay for this, I may have made a different decision about what type of school I went to. And I know a lot of people, like my friends say, well, how could you say that? Because you know, look what all God has done through you going to the school that you went to. And that is true. 
we wouldn't have met. You boys. Yeah, I mean, I got saved in college. I've met some incredible friends. You know, my life would not be the same if I didn't go to the college that I went to. But also, at the same time, you know, money is a really big part of our lives. And not, it's not everything, of course, but, like, it can be a huge hindrance um, or a blessing. So all that to say, when my dad passed away... I was not expecting to become debt free as a result of that. Um, we knew that he had life insurance, and um, honestly, my mom thought it was a lot less than what it what it was. Yeah. She didn't think it was no one twenty k, however much you had left, that we were going to be able to get access. to. Well, yeah, and that's the thing was, you know, I just really thank God for my mom. And if my dad was still alive I, in, in the same position, I want to believe that he would do the same thing. But I just don't know and we'll never know. Um, but I just know the reason why this story is kind of such an impactful thing for me. Because, you know, part of me is kind of like, oh, I don't know if we should share this because... We felt that way. We were like, can we really feel like we paid it off if we were able to pay off most of it through life insurance? Of someone else, uh, and we went out with some friends, who told us like God still did a huge thing in your life, and you shouldn't allow however it happened right. to negate you from giving Him glory. Right, because at the end of the day, this is not a finance channel or podcast where we're like, "Hey guys, like do what we did, and you can be where we are as well." This is really a space for the Lord to help us grow in our relationships and I never imagined the healing that I would receive for my relationship with my dad after he passed and this isn't the only way through getting the debt paid off because I told you guys I really felt abandoned by him and I remember you know one day when I was at my parents house this was 20 16. So Tim and I had just started dating a few months before. I had I was working at J. Crew part time. I had just started a full time job that took me nine months to get, and it wasn't really paying that much. I think I was making like the, maybe like twenty eight thousand dollars a year or something like that. Um, and I was at my parents' house, and this is this like I went home for Easter. That my mom paid my ticket, my plane ticket to go home, and. Um, I was there and I had to ask her for rent money because I didn't have enough money for rent. And I had like, you know, all my savings, the $2,000 that I had saved to live in Maryland was gone. Because I lived off of it. I was responsible with it, but it was still gone. And um, I remember that trip my dad had told me, he was like, you can't ask us for money anymore. Um, Your mom and I have our own goals and our own things to do. Like you need to pretty much take care of yourself. And I felt really, really abandoned in that moment. Like, what am I going to do? Like, and he had told me, like, yeah, you can't, like, look to us for, you know, help with your loans and stuff like that. Like, we're putting on a lot of money. And I was just sitting there, like, I'm in this situation because of you. <laughs> I felt really, I just felt really, really abandoned in that moment. And um, to, you know, kind of after his passing and everything that happened with that and to kind of learn that like wow all of this this policy was in place and he didn't tell anybody and my mom knew he had a policy but she didn't know how much it was and when she found out how much it was she was like i'm gonna pay off your loans and i mean to this day i still don't really believe it that we are we don't this huge burden and wait that we I know I essentially felt like we're always gonna have this like there's no way to get out of it there's no way to and I knew that you know God was a miracle worker but I also understand the practical laws of the land you know not that God doesn't you know send checks or whatever and do these incredible things for people because obviously he does but also I kind of was wrestling with this whole you know balance of like is this my fault? Like, is would God do something like this? Not like, what, is he kind enough? I know that he is, but like, is it what's best? Like, it may be best for us to pay it off over years and years and years. I just don't know. Um, and having to kind of finding a place of peace, um, no matter what, what that answer would be and what that situation would be. Um, so yeah, I think that like, that's, you know, through that whole situation and like, 
Tim, like you just mentioned, you know, I wrestled with kind of like, should we even share this? Because it's not really something that people can, you know, leave after and say, oh, this can happen for me too. Because maybe, you know, your parents are not in that situation or maybe, you know, it's just not. And also, and it was something that I honestly didn't even want to pray. For. Like, <laughs> you shouldn't pray that your parents pass away, <laughs> that they have a good life insurance. Um policy and like obviously I didn't pray for that either but I think and it's not that's not what we're celebrating we're not celebrating the mode we're celebrating the provider we're celebrating Jehovah Jireh we're celebrating God and knowing that like he knew all this was going to happen and like just the timing of it all um you know after we had already said yes to him for this house and did it so scared and did it not because knowing of the debt yeah, and did it not knowing, well, that was one of the main reasons, but yeah, did it not knowing how we were going to be able to pay off our loans, knowing that they were coming back like the following month, um, the payments were going to kick back in. So I just think that, you know, God is always working in the background and it's so hard to say yes when you can't see, um, but that's really what he requires of us. It's not faith. It's not trust. If you already have the answer in your hand, you know, yeah. or that you can see the path. And I mean, it's never going to go away, right? Because, you know, even now we're in situations where it's like, all right, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to solve this. But looking back on that situation where it's like God did it then, like, yeah, he can do it again. Our whole goal through this podcast was, like Pauline just said, for God to get the glory and for you to remember that God is the creator of the universe, that he owns everything in heaven and on earth and there's nothing that's too hard for him whether it's financial whether it's health whether it's anything he can do all things and i just want to read a verse as we close uh that really helped us as we made the decision to move into this house even though we knew we had the debt at the time uh psalm 37 4 says delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart i don't know what your desires are right now maybe it's to get out of debt like we had Maybe it's to get a home. Maybe it's to get a man or a woman. Maybe it's just to be able to go to sleep without having thoughts that are tormenting you. I don't know what your desires are. But I do know that if you take delight in the Lord, which just means please someone greatly or take great pleasure in, if you do your best to seek him, he will give you the desires of your heart because that's what his word says. And we know Mm -hmm. that God is not a man that he should lie. So if he said it, he will do it. And I know that this, this sounds like just Bible talk and just like super high, not practical. But at the end of the day, we either believe what God said or we don't. And we have to be able to walk in that faith even when we don't see like Pauline said. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, if nothing else, this helps you realize maybe I need to go to God in prayer. And just talk to him about how I'm feeling about a situation and just allow this to be a conversation starter for you and the Lord. And we'll see y'all next week on the W podcast. Bye. Thanks for watching this video to get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel and make sure you check out our other videos as well.